In this video, we will demonstrate some recommendations that industry guidelines and experts give us for using a Class II Type A2 biosafety cabinet. Industry guidelines recommend that laboratories deliberately distance their biosafety cabinets from places where people walking alongside them or other airstreams might upset their own airflow dynamics. For the same reason, they advise that you limit other staff's movements within the vicinity when you are using a cabinet. As you perform the first steps to get ready before manipulating any biohazards, wear a traditional laboratory coat over relaxed attire. Create a record of the cabinet's use according to your laboratory's standard operating procedures. Be certain the cabinet is field certified. Industry guidelines emphasize assigning field certification to knowledgeable technicians. They outline many instances that require this field certification, such as after setting up a new cabinet, when a year's time has passed, when transferring it to a new place, or when performing technical work on it. Industry guidelines also emphasize documenting instructions for cabinet loading and unloading, as well as overall utilization. Use a table or cart for assembling any items that are not hazardous. In a future step, you will utilize a gown and gloves to withdraw the hazardous items out of an incubator. Guidelines suggest you flush the cabinet with air using its own motor, usually recommending a time of five minutes. Guidelines remind you to ensure that the aperture of the front window is set correctly. Industry sources advise that you rest your feet on the ground or on an attached prop for comfort. Experts also advise setting the seat to optimize the comfort of the user's feet and spine and to a tallness that places the cabinet's window access lower than the head of the operator. Others recommend a vertical seating position that avoids laying the user's arm on the air vents and will align the bottom of their arms with the leading edge of the cabinet window as they perform their function. Industry standards advise setting the base stand no taller than what the producer is required to indicate as the tallest setting that will keep the biosafety cabinet from tipping over. One industry standard suggests that every operator's manner of carrying out their task in the cabinet be analyzed, at least considering points such as how the inside of the cabinet is arranged, how the operator best positions their body, and how well they can see. A place to sit that can be configured along six different axes and promotes the right positioning of the operator's body by tailoring its vertical and horizontal components is among the items that can assist the operator. One is advised to make the right modifications to where the operator sits in order to sustain their spine. Guidelines also suggest staging one's task in such a way that one can easily see the inside of the work zone through the front glass pane without too much shimmering or mirroring. Verify that the cabinet alarm is powered and in working order. You are advised to proceed operating the cabinet by looking for any alarms. If there are any defects, ensure that the researcher, management, and cabinet service supplier are informed and that the reason for any alarm is determined. Some recommend checking that the cabinet will pull a piece of paper from the center of its access opening towards itself as a means of verifying its inflow. One suggested best practice is for any blockages to be taken out during a review of the slots that pull the air in. Although IV bars and ultraviolet lights can remain, the cabinet interior can be emptied of any other objects. Close the drain valve prior to starting any tasks inside of the cabinet. Industry experts remind you, as the user, to take care that the aperture of the cabinet's front window is set correctly and to have enabled the window alarm. Experts and guidelines often suggest a hand cleansing step at this point. Biosafety experts and guidelines emphasize that a risk assessment will decide the PPE that should be donned by the workers prior to using the facility to carry out a task. Note that this video simply illustrates donning PPE and what is shown may not be correct for your specific application as risk assessments may lead to different choices of such gear. Guidelines and biosafety experts will include gloves in their suite of PPE while their exact recommendations for number or type may again vary. Their specifics may vary, but industry guidelines and biosafety experts commonly designate either a laboratory coat 
or a gown as shown here, often pointing out that the cuff of the laboratory gloves should be placed over the end of the gown sleeve to avoid any bare skin exposed on the wrist. At this point, biosafety guidelines and experts typically recommend putting the inside of the BSC through some type of superficial disinfection process. Industry guidelines and experts note that any chlorides must be rinsed off the places where they were applied as a disinfection agent in order to stop them from rusting, often referencing the use of clean water or alcohol for this purpose. Some guidelines refer to this practice of covering the work surface with an absorbent material whose underside is made of plastic. However, they remind one to keep the air vents from being blocked by it. Biosafety experts and guidelines alike commonly suggest making one initial transfer of every item the operator anticipates using for their task so that they will not need to cross the airflow later on to make additional transfers of items into the cabinet. For this reason, many also suggest outlining all items on a document. However, other recommendations caution that the cabinet should not contain more items than the bare essentials often warning about the effect items can have on the cabinet's airstreams. Transfer the items to the cabinet from the table or cart using flat, straight-in, and low-speed arm insertions. A superficial disinfection is commonly recommended for any items headed for the biosafety cabinet. Biosafety experts and guidelines discuss many potential strategies to manage waste but they commonly recommend pre-positioning whatever will enclose that waste inside of the cabinet ahead of time. Here, the rationale is to make the waste container accessible without reaching outward across the airflow. Guidelines commonly warn about ensuring air vents are not obstructed, particularly when choosing the position of the mat or other objects. The suggested work surface position for items is behind the air split, but with the distance between the items and both the forward and posterior air vents. Biosafety guidelines suggest creating a lateral buffer in between items that are clean and potentially contaminated. In fact, one recommendation is to make the biohazard itself the final transfer into the biosafety cabinet. Prior to initiating your task, Recheck that the height of the cabinet front window is set correctly, in case it was increased, to get objects into the BSC. Postpone the procedure for five minutes to settle the airflow. Biosafety guidelines recommend using flat, straight-in, and low-speed arm insertions by which the cabinet airflow is less likely to be fragmented. Once their arms are inserted, one guideline suggests the user pause for a minute to flush them with air and settle both the BSC and its airflow. Guidelines warn that not utilizing the BSC appropriately can counteract its safety, but suggest its safety can be reinforced through techniques that they outline. It is suggested to cite pertinent resources while teaching anyone who might run the cabinet about its utilization and its constraints, as well as to achieve the greatest security by formulating processes with a basis in how exactly biosafety cabinets function. There are a few common themes that we can find in guidelines and expert opinion. The first common theme we find is that biosafety guidelines advise crossing and disrupting the airflow at the front of the biosafety cabinet as sparingly as possible. Another common theme we find is that the biosafety guidelines and experts advise a controlled speed for any actions taken. Another theme we find is that biosafety guidelines warn about ensuring unclogged cabinet air vents. Most guidelines also recommend the operator use the posterior of the BSC to execute a task inside the work zone. Biosafety guidelines frequently describe the inside of the cabinet in terms of zones for different items or functions, usually naming the leftmost part as clean, the rightmost part as dirty, and describe the buffer zone in between them as a place for executing one's task. Biosafety guidelines commonly warn the operators of biosafety cabinets to remain vigilant about their laboratory methods, often referred to with terms such as aseptic technique, good microbiological practice and procedure, or simply good microbiological practices. 
As the operator brings the task to a close, their next steps are for all items to be sealed, their gloves to be doffed and enclosed in the biohazard receptacle, and their hands to be completely cleansed. Industry guidelines suggest you flush the biosafety cabinet with air by using its own motor, usually recommending a time of five minutes. Donning new clean gloves is suggested at this point. Biosafety guidelines and experts typically make superficial disinfection or enclosure a prerequisite for the extraction of anything from the cabinet. One is also advised to use the biohazard container to contain the pleated work surface mat when ending their task. One recommendation suggests donning new clean gloves as one finalizes a task and begins their cabinet disinfection. One should empty the biosafety cabinet of all items when finishing their tasks. Industry guidance emphasizes documenting and providing instructions for cabinet loading and unloading. At this point, biosafety guidelines and experts typically recommend putting the inside of the BSC through some type of superficial disinfection. When discussing superficial disinfection agents, expert and guidelines often call out the importance of allowing them to interact with the cabinet long enough, or what they call contact time. When biosafety guidelines and experts typically make superficial disinfection or enclosure a prerequisite for the extraction of anything from the cabinet, Note that this is said to also apply to the biohazard containers themselves. The biosafety guidance refers to many potential types of containers, ranging from bags, such as the one shown here, to other containers, or ones more appropriate for pipettes or liquids. Industry guidelines and experts note that any chlorides have to be rinsed off the places where they were applied as a disinfection agent to stop them from rusting, often suggesting the use of clean water or alcohol for this purpose. Although many biosafety guidelines do involve powering down the biosafety cabinet at this point, many also cite reasons that some laboratories may not do so, such as containment, filtration of the room's air, or keeping room pressurization stable. Guidance at this step normally suggests the user's gloves and gown be doffed and that their hands be cleansed. 